Which is worse, a guilty person escapes or an innocent person punished for a crime that they did not commit? The answer to this question matters because it could have potentially serious implications on how legal justice systems should be designed. So let's explore this question a little bit in this video. But first, let's be clear about this one thing. We have to analyze this issue assuming the same identical crime for the two possible scenarios in this question. It can't be a mass murderer going free versus an innocent man being convicted for a very minor misdemeanor. It has to be about the same crime. So with that in mind, let's consider two hypothetical scenarios, both of which involve a car theft, the same crime. In the first hypothetical scenario, this happens. Your car is stolen and you don't have insurance, you've been the victim of a crime, car theft. And the thief, this guilty person, for whatever reason, is never caught, he escapes, and he's never punished, and your car is just gone. You would have to replace it yourself. So this is scenario number one. Now in the other hypothetical scenario, this happens. Somebody's car is stolen, you didn't steal it, you're absolutely innocent, but you are accused of the theft. Moreover, not only are you accused of this crime, you are convicted and punished for it. So this means even though you are 100% completely innocent, you have to give the victim a new car and you are given a prison sentence of a couple of years. Which of these two scenarios is worse? We can certainly agree that both scenarios are bad. In scenario one, a crime has been committed, you're the victim, you lost your car, and the bad guy escapes, never had to answer for his crime. And that's bad. And in the second scenario, you, a completely innocent person, are convicted and punished for a crime that you absolutely did not commit. That's also bad. But which one is worse? Which one is more unfair and unjust? Well, it depends on how we look at it. It depends on which perspective we take when looking at this problem. If we look at this purely from the perspective of the victim, the person whose car was stolen, then one might argue that scenario 1 is worse and that scenario 2 is a little bit better. Because in scenario 2, at least, the victim gets a car back. One might further argue, if we take the perspective of society at large, if the primary goal of the legal justice system is to deter crime, then it doesn't matter that much that an innocent person got convicted and punished for the crime as long as the public witness and believe that a guilty person is punished for this crime, it would serve as a deterrence for this type of crime in society in the future. One might argue further still, if we truly want to be tough on crime, then we must accept the risk that sometimes, occasionally, an innocent person might get convicted for a crime that he didn't commit. That's just unavoidable. It's just collateral damage. But are these the right way to look at and analyze this problem? Maybe, instead of assuming the perspective of only the victim, we should put ourselves in the shoes of both the victim in scenario 1 and the convict in scenario 2. Because after all, both identities represent someone who is completely innocent. The victim in scenario 1 is certainly an innocent person, but the person who got convicted in scenario 2 is also an innocent person. They are both innocent. So let's do that. Let's put ourselves in the shoes of both and ask ourselves which scenario is worse. I don't know what you think, so please feel free to tell me what you think about this in the comments down below, but we could argue, even though both scenarios are bad, we might be a little bit better able to tolerate scenario 1 than we can scenario 2. In scenario 1, I've been the victim of theft and I lost my car and the thief is never caught and I have to get myself a new car. That's a bad situation, but we can probably deal with it. But in scenario 2, even though I am 100% innocent, I didn't do the crime, and yet I am accused of it, people believe I did it, I'm convicted of it, and punished for it. That is just so unfair that it might be enough to shatter a person, because it is just categorically wrong and morally unjust and unacceptable. If this is also how you feel, then you feel the same way as William Blackstone. The Blackstone formulation says it is better that 10 guilty persons escape than that one innocent suffer. 
Of course, we do not necessarily take this literally in terms of the numbers or the ratio, but the Blackstone formulation represents the notion and the legal principle that in case of ambiguity and doubts in legal proceedings, the governments and the courts should avoid convicting and punishing because it is better a guilty person escapes than an innocent person convicted and suffers. It is also worth remembering that the Blackstone formulation was proposed in the 1760s in England when and where capital punishment was alive and well. It is also worth mentioning that Blackstone was not the first to propose this notion. In our little example, we talked about a hypothetical car theft and that the price the innocent convict had to pay would be a car and a couple of years of prison time. Now imagine, should the punishment be death, which is a form of punishment that is not undoable or reversible, the Blackstone formulation would be of even more relevance. As the Laudibus Legum Angelia states, one would much rather that 20 guilty persons should escape the punishment of death than that one innocent person should be condemned and suffer capitally. And John Adams states, it is more important that innocence should be protected than it is that guilt be punished. For guilt and crimes are so frequent in this world that all of them cannot be punished. When innocence itself is brought to the bar and condemned, especially to die, the subject will exclaim, it is immaterial to me whether I behave well or ill, for virtue itself is no security. And if such a sentiment as this were to take hold in the mind of the subject, that would be the end of all security whatsoever. So, what do you think about the Blackstone's formulation? I invite you to leave your thoughts and comments down below, but please keep them civil and respectful. And as always, thanks for watching this Rainy Ways Random video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.